episode three of Soccer and Sixes, the programme that shines a light on remarkable stories from the streets. This week, for our third and final episode of the series, we've decided to devote the show to the Street Child United young leaders who are paving the way for the next generation. But before we meet our impressive global guest, I'd like to introduce you to my co-host for the week, Julia Pimenta in Brazil. Hi, Julia. How are you today? Hey, Ayati. I'm well, thanks. Good. So, Julia, tell me, how did you actually get involved with Street Child United? Um, well, I was doing a master in the UK about two years ago in sport business in Loughborough. And I was in a sport conference and there was kind of a space for uh, mentoring. And I was speaking to, to the mentor at that time and speaking about how I, I think football is a tool for development. I was very into football at that moment. And I was talking about my dissertation on capacity and community capacity building. And he just, after the chat, uh, literally wrote a phone number in a paper, sent it to me. And it happened that was the number of my colleague today. So he thought like, as you and I had some things in common and we could contribute. Uh, so. I went for an interview and here I am. <laughs> Tell me um, about the work that you're doing with the young leaders. So the young leaders, they are the former participants. So the people that took part in Street Child uh, World Cup, usually they're former street connecting people. So they, they can easily connect for the kids that we work with as they are role models for them. Um, so we can have a, directly, a direct communication with them and amplify our message uh, through our young leaders. So the Young Leaders Program is a broad concept, um, an umbrella concept that involves other events, initiatives, activities, activations. And we, we created that to be a mid and a long-term impact after the Street Child uh, World Cup. Um, the idea is that the former participants that want to keep engaged with SEU keep campaigning and ad advocating for the street connect young people's right, they can, they, they become a Street Child United Young Leader. Fantastic. And tell me about the Change 10 program. What, what is that all about and, and what happens? So the Change 10 is the biggest program as you have ever made. It's a one year program started last month and it will uh, land until May next year. Um, aims to invest on professional and personal development of 10 former participants who have taken part in the Street Child World Cup. Uh, it's sponsored by the International School Partnerships and focus on le developing leadership skills, other soft skills, English language, communication, advocacy learning, and general personal and professional growth. If I can just explain the structure, we, we divide it in, in three main parts. So we have the online phase, the in-person in the UK, and the in-person when they go back home. This first stage, because of the pandemic, we had to make it online. So after this 20-week program online, the young people should come to the UK as soon as they can, uh, where we'll be focused on English language. So we have some, some classes in, in Cambridge. Then we'll provide some sport coaching so they can put in practice the, the, the theory that they learn online about how to, to, to teach people how to play football and cricket. Uh, we're also we're working on designing the future professional plans uh, and provide work experience in the areas they have interest in. And in this last, uh, in this last phase, the, the return home, we will ask them to choose two or three workshops they most like it and deliver to their community. So. To, to reach more people and more more young people. Fantastic. It sounds like a great program and um, you must have seen some, some fantastic stories. It must be like a roller coaster journey, I'm, I'm guessing, for young people. What do you think a program like this means to them, to street connected young people? We we'll empower them to, to become more confident and, and to go through their own aspirations, their desire, as, as any other young people. They have their, their own ambitions, their desires. And a program like that is just an opportunity. We're just a platform and we try to give a push on, 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 their, on their development. 
And Julia, personally for you, what does it mean to you doing work like this? It must be so rewarding. And I'm just interested to know how you feel when you come away from working so closely with young people on, on you know, a program like this. Yeah, definitely. So I think I'm very privileged to, to be given the opportunity to meet such amazing young people as well as uh, people that work with them. Some come from very tough backgrounds, vulnerable conditions, but still have so much love to give. And this is something that really gets you. Julia, this work sounds fantastic and it must just be so brilliant for you. What a great feeling you must have coming away uh, from working with fantastic young people. So listen, we've got a really big, busy show today with lots of people calling in from different countries. So now let's meet some of the young leaders. Yes, yeah, thank you, Archie. Looking forward to that. Having good leadership is a fundamental part in any successful organisation. Great leaders need to inspire, engage and encourage unity. Our next two guests from India and Bolivia epitomise all those values. Thank you, Paul and Karina, for joining us today. Thank you. It's a pleasure meeting you. Thank you. Hello. Greetings from Bolivia. A pleasure meeting here. Hi, Karina. I'm going to start off with you. Tell me, what are the main issues that street-connected young people are facing in Bolivia? Well, in our country, Bolivia, we have a lot of street children that are facing especially violence in the streets. They suffer the lack of uh, food, the lack of uh, a family that can take care of them. And most of them exercise their right because they don't have a birth certificate or an ID card. So they cannot go to school, they cannot go to a health care center. So the situation that they have to face uh, here in my country is uh, very difficult. Paul, over in Chennai, what are the main issues over there for children? You know, uh, yeah, in, in Chennai we have two kinds of uh, kids on the streets. One, uh, one is the children who are on their own, who run away from home, and uh, they are living uh, without adult supervision, at railway stations, bus stations, public places, marina beach and parks. And the other uh, group of kids are living on the streets with their families. They call payment dwelling families in the city of Chennai, which are thousands in numbers in our city. And both these groups of kids uh, are facing a similar situations of uh, lack of safety, protection. They, they are always uh, uh, in a situation of abuse and exploitation and they lack education. They have they lack all the opportunities that any child, growing child, requires in their childhood. So street kids are always, uh, and they lack uh, respect. They lack the uh, basic infrastructure of uh, health care, hygiene, and, um, you know, opportunities to play. And, uh, you know, uh, street kids are always uh, criminalized. Uh, they're always looked at. Uh, uh, children to be discriminated and they always are victimized from all kinds of people and the authorities. That's the situation for street kids here in Chennai. And Bo, can you tell us what Karun Alaya is doing to support these young people? Uh, Karun Alaya is uh, an organization uh, working for street children, working children for the past 25 years. Now we are uh, in our 25th year, we are completing our 25 years of service for street children in our, in, in our city, in our country. And we do rescue of children at the stations. We have uh, our shelter homes for boys and shelter homes for girls. We do protection for the children. We provide them opportunities for development. We do rehabilitation and reintegration for those kids who are found on the streets. And we also do education, protection, leadership and the development of children on the streets who are living with their families. So we, uh, we, you know, we give opportunities of uh, sport and art and uh, leadership. We have scouting. Uh, we have various activities also for the women because we, want, we always believe that women are the ones who are taking care of all these kids. So they need to be empowered. So we help the women in the street families to understand their rights, understand protection and how to also care for children. So we give them all kinds of trainings for them uh, so that they are also vigilant on the streets to protect the children and to, uh, you know, report if there is any issues of safety for children on the streets. Corina, you run a big campaign on birth ID, which I understand is, is one of the things you, you advocate for. 
Can you tell us a bit about this, this project? Thanks to the legacy program, we have the opportunity to raise a big campaign in the whole country in Bolivia in order to have the birth certificate for free for every child that is living or connected to street. So uh, starting with the leaders, our team that participate in the last World Cup, so we have the chance to, to access to some government stage and uh, give them the opportunity to raise their voice advocating for the children that they don't have this uh, important document. So we are raising this campaign and nowadays we have like a, a hundred of children that have the birth certificate and the ID card so they can now go back to a school or go to the health center to receive a, a medical care for them. Karina, do you think sport has the power to change lives? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. As a matter of fact, LLI starts just by playing soccer on the street with kids. So we believe that sport is really important. It's like a tool that really attracts people and especially children to join a group, to join a project. So a sport has that power to really successful, to really give the children to, to reach a successful life. Oh, what impact yeah. do you think that the participating in the Street Child World Cup has in the young people's life? The Street Child World Cup is a, a, a unique global initiative ever made for the respect, dignity, and rights of street children. So that's, I should tell that because that's the most important uh, initiative in this decade uh, for street kids. We always felt it was a life-changing experience for young people. And uh, you know, children who had no hope in their life, who were living on the streets, were the poorest of the poor. When we prepare them and we bring them for Street Cell United or Street Cell World Cup uh, events, and uh, you know, it transforms them with their new hope, with their mm -hmm. perspective, with new friendship, and uh, you know, they open their eyes to the world and they learn a lot from their experience. These are events which are very rare and which are very unique and I think uh, it changes children's perspective and uh, you know they become a better person when they are back and they're inspiring other people. Can you tell us about yeah. the, your young leaders and the hopes you have? I must tell you that we have about 43 young leaders who have been part of the Street Child uh, in, uh, United's initiatives in the last uh, uh, six, six, six years and uh, presently we have uh, uh, girls uh, who, are, who have been part of the uh, World Cup uh, in, in the recent past. And, uh, you know, they are very inspiring young leaders. They are now learning uh, to speak English. Children who have never been uh, in English medium schools, but now they are learning English through the Young Leaders Program, which is actually amazing uh, how they are, uh, you know, uh, changing uh, every week uh, after the sessions. And they are very creative. They are also getting involved in their sessions, uh, which is definitely going to be uh, of much use in their life as well as to other girls uh, whom they are interacting uh, every time. So I think uh, our young leaders are also very uh, self-confident now. They are, they have they they know that they are they have they understood their self-worth, and uh, they are really proud that uh, they are being involved uh, in the young leaders program. We have a special programs to develop the skills of our young leaders that in our organization. And we have now the, the opportunity to share with you the Street Child United, this, um, this program. So our young leaders are really interested in continue learning about how to become a good leader and how to develop their skill so they can also speak in public and to raise some issues in front of authorities here and to write some proposals in order to advocate for some issues that they are facing here in Bolivia. So being part of this uh, program and being involved in the United World Cup, it was really important for them them so that because now they can feel that they empower and they can really deal with some issues and to raise some proposals to our government and to some authorities. 
So this um, alliance is really important for us. So they are willing to keep going in this, um, in this thing of raising some issues and to advocate for their rights. Can you tell us about your favorite moment in, in a World Cup that you participated? Uh, there are many favorite moments for us and definitely the winning the Three Child Cricket World Cup at Lord's London last year is one of the most uh, memorable favorite moments. But we also have other favorite moments like when Hepsiba uh, won gold at 100 meters in 2016 at the Three Child Games in Rio. That was a fabulous moment. And when Usha spoke uh, very passionately at the Street Child General Assembly at Copacabana Palace Hotel after the Street Child Games, which uh, actually, uh, you know, was a very inspiring um, uh, moment for us uh, when the, uh, the young people from around the world, they took the stage and they took over and they uh, put their issues uh, in front of those uh, great people who were assembled at the time. In the year 2018, the, the most exciting experience was to to see our team of girls uh, sharing the time with other girls, and also to to, to see them that they can uh, really overcome the problems that they were facing in 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 the country in Bolivia. So to see them as a team and playing with others and know that they have the possibility to, to really uh, overcome this difficult that they have. So it was really a, a grateful experience for me in Moscow. And also have the, the chance to meet other people and other organizations and share the, the problems that we face and trying to, to also to strengthen us uh, and to give hope and encourage us to, to continue doing the work that we are doing. So it was great for me in, in that uh, event. Oh, uh, I understand you were involved in making the movie The Road to Moscow. Can you tell us a bit about it? When we were in Moscow, there was a team of uh, crew, camera crew that was uh, traveling with us and uh, the, from Jaja Production from the Netherlands. And they did a wonderful uh, film called Road to Moscow because we took a team of girls from the streets from Chennai and every child in the team had a unique life experience on the street. And they were also young leaders and uh, with talented young girls. Uh, their stories were very powerful and they took that uh, film, uh, how they prepared and how they participated in Rio and uh, how they return back and how their life has changed. That film was very powerful as well when people have uh, said that uh, the movie was you know, very well uh, taken and it was telling the complete story of life on the street and how these talented young girls are able to also achieve on a global stage. Marina, what are your hopes in terms of tackling the issues that streets connected young children are facing in your country? Well, uh, my main hope is that the cycle of violence stops and they can have the opportunity to really exercise their rights. They ha could have the right to go back to schools to study and they can have the capacity to forgive the things that they have uh, faced in the past. They can have the capacity also to forget those things and to give love and to be sure that they can, they, they can be able to overcome these um, difficult things and to look the present and the future with hope and love. Thank you so much. Thank you to both of you for joining us today. We think we're going to be working with both of your charities for many, many years to come and we really love the work you do. Thank you. Thank you very much for this very exciting uh, evening. Thank you very much. Yeah, we thank enjoyed you. It. The work we do at Street Child United focuses on empowering children and giving them the best chance of a bright future. We can't do it without the passion and enthusiasm of young leaders. So joining us now are four incredible young people to talk about their experiences. Thank you so much for joining us today, everyone. Bye. 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 Hi guys, I hope you're all well. Hi guys, you're all fine. Yeah, doing good. Good to see everyone. Hi guys.
thank you so much uh, to everyone for joining us from Tanzania, Egypt and Brazil and the UK. Tell us a bit about yourself and how you got involved with Street Child United. I'm Sam. I played in the 2018 Street Football World Cup in Russia where I met all of the other young leaders who are joining the call. Hi, my name is Rika from Brazil and I participated in the Street Child World Cup and the to 2014 and in the cup in Russia as a young leader. My name is Sadok, I'm from Tanzania. I came into contact with Switcher United uh, for the first time in 2010 when I was playing, playing for Tanzania team in the first ever Switcher World Cup and I was very, very happy to represent my country. And my name is Abdallah Elzat as you know. I'm from Egypt. I want to go to Brazil in 2014 and to Moscow in 2018. Uh, I want to Brazil in 2014 as a player and to Moscow in 2018 uh, as alumni. And I'm enjoying being part of Street Children United Young Leaders. So from being a young participant in Russia, um, I met Drika. She was a young leader at the time and she definitely inspired me a lot. Um, so, Drika, what would you say it takes to become a true leader and a good one? You have to, to be able to help others like it was helping and you have to be able to listen to others, this is so important, and encourage them like, to, to realize that they dreamed, to achieve their goals, and of course you have to being responsible because you are a leader. You have someone looking up to you. Abdallah, how does it feel being a young leader and what are you looking for at about the program? Actually, my friend, being a young leader is a wonderful thing to be because leaders can change a lot. Uh, they can share ideas, they can share experience in order to help themselves and others. When I, when I say others, I mean that uh, I, I, I shouldn't be in a comfort zone while others are suffering a lot. And the thing I'm looking forward from the program is to have more experience and more knowledge in order to help myself and others. For, for a better future. Sam, I'm going to come back to you. Um, what has inspired you the most um, through Street Child United? Um, probably the devotion and determination that they have to help children from all around the world. For me, that's so inspiring. Um, I think we can all probably say that Street Child United has changed all of our lives. Um, but the special thing is that they've changed our lives in so many different ways. So the way they've impacted me would be different to Sadat, Drika or Abdallah. Um, and that's really special and really inspiring. I'm going to come over to you now. Um, tell me, how did it feel to represent your country and what sort of reception did you get when you returned to Tanzania? Um, actually, it feels uh, very very good like i feel like i'm very i'm someone important in my country but most importantly in the community i live and uh, because of my background i use this as the something that i can use to um, help others who are going through the same kind of life i had in my childhood so the kids have been enjoying these moments and they are turning to, to the people that can inspire others and they are, they are being strong and they are, they are being uh, leaders for others in the community. Abdallah, would you like to, to share how SU positively impact, impact your life? Which of United had touched me a lot of things because when I went to Brazil or to Moscow, uh, that makes me to think more about my future, to, to think more about my life uh, and do what I have to do to have a life 
a good vibe or a good future. Trika, can you tell me about the positive impact that being involved with Street Child United has had on your life? Before I get involved with them, I don't have like many goals to achieve in my life. I don't, I don't make any big plans in my life. I was just, just thinking like a normal girl, just thinking, okay, I have to get a job and home and getting married, things like that. But now, I think proud of myself. I, I, I've been proud of the girl that I've come up. And basically, they gave, they gave me an identity because now I know I am a power girl. I know I am an inspiration for others. And yeah, and I'm so grateful to, to be involved with them. Della, what skills have you learned in, in the program and how it helped you to make your voice heard? I learned a lot of things like self empathy, how to be confident, how to be happy, uh, and how to express my feelings. And they helped me to, to have a strong personality. To, with talking to people and deal with life. Sam, as you've been for a while with Street Child United, I would like just to, to forward that question to you as well. Can you tell us uh, what you've learned through maybe some workshops that you've taken part and, and how you made your voice to be heard? Yeah, I'd definitely say that Congress helped me a lot. Um, so Congress is basically um, almost like a workshop where you learn about problems that street connected children face all around the world. Um, you talk about the problems that you face in your own country and possible ways to overcome that. Um, so I'd definitely say for me Congress was um, very like, it put a big impact on my life. Because um, I was teamed up with Team India back in Russia and to hear their voices, it was so powerful. And I'd say that it really helped me find my own voice and install like a confidence that I didn't have before that then encouraged me to find the confidence to not only amplify my voice, but the voices of the unheard back in the other country. And Sadat, from your point of view, what does it mean for you to be a role model in your community in Tanzania? I feel like uh, very responsible for the uh, street connected young people and all young people who are in vulnerable situations in my country. Um, so uh, I'm always happy to share my experience, like my background, um, the things that I've gone through, just to be an inspirational person to the people that need to change uh, their life. So, yeah, I feel like I still need a job to do and day to day um, I'm still going through uh, some books, readings, uh, everything that can help me to develop my skills, to develop my personality, my confidence and everything that can help me to be a good role model to these people because everyone needs a role model and if I'm a role model to some people, I need to um, to be better and better every day so that I can help them to transform from where they are to a better situation. Street Child World Cup is about tackling important global issues, but of course is about fun. What is the most fun you've had in, in a Street Child World Cup or during Change 10? When we went to, Mes to Moscow, uh, I met a lot of people there and they were very kind to us. They treated us with kindness. They love us from their hearts. This thing, this thing I love so much. There are a lot of fun moments, so, but one of them, even in 2014 and 2018, the fun moments are the art moments. Like when everyone's dancing together, everyone's showing them art, their futures, and yeah, there's the fun moment. I will enjoy to see that and I will enjoy to be part of that. For me, I'd probably say um, the late shows, um, especially back in Cambridge. 
um, when me and Sadak was watching uh, the team Tanzania out there performing their late show performance that was full of acrobats. It was it was crazy. It was actually a massive thing. I, I, I love that. Yeah, when in that moment. I was lucky enough to be um, like a presenter or an MC like, to run the show. So it was very fun how people could present their culture from their countries, how they could dance and show us what they do in their countries. Looking to find out what everyone's ambitions are. So Abdallah, let's start with you. What are your ambitions? And what do you want to do in the next five years time, maybe? My ambitions are to have a good life in a beautiful place with a good people and getting getting to know myself better and try to strengthen my personality more as I would it to be. Sadok, I would just like, uh, would like to know from, from your side as well, your ambitions. I know you've been doing a lot of work with youth in your community, but you also have some talent for media as well. Yeah. So, yeah? Yeah. Just, just tell us. Thank you, Julia. Um, so in the next five years, uh, I want to be an actor because I believe in in acting. If I put the message uh, of Street Connector young people, it will it will uh, it will be well received and understood by the whole world, and it will have a big impact to the people um, about the issues of Street Connector young people. Um, but also, I want to be an, an entrepreneur as I have started something. Like, I have my own clothing brand, it's, it's just grown. But I, I, I think uh, being an entrepreneur, I will need to make sure that um, I help the projects that will need to transform the lives of this these um, street connected young people in different countries, not only in my country, but in different countries like in Africa and other countries where the situation is very hard for these young people. Stan, you share with us, what are your ambitions for the future? Yeah, so I hope one day to work in the media full time um, and really shine a light on the stories that are unheard in the world. Um, at the minute I'm at university studying um, multimedia sports um, journalism. So for me I want to share the stories that, of these children and a big thing for me would probably be because that's what Street Child United done for me. They, um, they shared a light, they shined a light on my story um, and others that are very impactful around the world. So I'd definitely say I'd look to do the work that they almost do for um, kids around the world. Sam, I think you've got a great, bright future ahead in the media. You've got the right ambition and personality. And I can imagine you doing my job one day. I'll be working <laughs> I think. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Rika, you're already a role model in your community. We know that girls look up to you and think you're fantastic. What do you want to do in the next five or ten years' time? Well, I want to finish the university physical education and I want to, to travel all the world to get to know other social projects, like the project that work, and change the experience and I want to help them in anything I can. Basically, I want to help other people, like I was helping one day, and I want to do some business to, to get money to help them more. And I want to still connect it with History Child United. Yeah, Drika, you, you definitely will keep connected with us. I, I, I've already seen you uh, working in, in social programs. I, I saw you in the in the safe space in Complexo da Penha and all the respect that you got from everyone there which is it's just like it's something that you can't learn in any in any university it's just something from you unique 
I'm gonna change my position because it starts raining and I'm outside. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was debating actually what one is a better tune for this video. We Shall Overcome or Show Shaloza. I really love that song, Show Shaloza. And yeah. kind of I in it. <laughs> I think I mean, you'll sing it very we can, well. Shaloza would sound good, yeah. Because I did that in Moscow. Shaloza, Shaloza. Somebody symbolizes a lot of things for me. Um, unity, hope, and power are the first things that spring to my mind. Um, so much so that I actually got a tattoo that says, We are all somebody just here. And I know Julia also has the tattoo. We've got matching ones, but yeah. Wow, that's a nice tattoo. I want to get one too. Yes. All young leaders. <laughs> Thank you, Sam. So, Sadik, what does I am somebody mean to you? I am somebody means um, I have my own rights and I know who I am and I know my dignity and I know what to do to other people so that I don't break the law and when I do something to other people, I make yeah. them develop emotionally and physically. So that's how I understand I am somebody. So Abdallah, what does I am somebody means to you? I am somebody means to you that I am exist and have an opinion and a voice. Frika, what does somebody means to you? It means I have my, my rights respected and I have an identity and I have a platform to express myself. Thank you so much for joining us today from all over the globe. We're so inspired by everything you do. So keep going at it. And we hope to see you somewhere in the world very, very soon. Thanks a lot, guys. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Thank see you. you. Bye. Thank you. Julia, what a great show we've had today. How do you feel after speaking to those inspiring young people? Yeah, well, it's always good to, to spend some time with them. Um, we've been speaking weekly. But every time we, we hear from them, it's something new. And you, I, I don't need to speak. You saw them like saying, and it seems like our work is, is much easier when we have them speaking on our behalf because they know better. And I love the conversation we had with Karina and Paul as well, getting those different perspectives from two you know, different countries and exactly what's going on. Both are projects that we have as models. Um, it's very important for us to, to have those projects among us because they can inspire others as well. And the same thing as the young leaders can serve as role models for young people, good projects like that can serve as role models for more projects. And that's something I think Street Child United do really well. You've got that real knack of finding the right project. So are there lots and lots of plans for the future? Are you always on the lookout to find other projects kind of dotted all over the globe? Definitely. We... Well, we are always looking for, for good projects. Of course, we have these applications when we have an event, but we are always with, with our, our, our eyes on it. For example, now for Qatar, we broke our records on projects. We got almost 50 applications. So we are in a good position to choose like uh, projects that can, can really make a change in their community. Absolutely. 
Street Child United have been operating for 10 years. We've worked with young people in over 30 countries, collaborated with some of the biggest names in sport, the arts and changed lives. Thank you to all of our supporters, volunteers and young people who believe in us. We know there's a lot more work to do, so we're busy preparing for Qatar 2022, India 2023 and beyond. Please like, follow and share our message as we continue to support street connected young people around the world and create a platform for their voices to be heard. So all that's left to say is, I am somebody. I may be poor, but I'm somebody. I may be a child, but I'm somebody. I may be orphaned or on the street, but I'm somebody. I may be small, but I'm somebody. I may make mistakes, but I'm somebody. My clothes are different, my face is different, my hair is different, but I'm somebody. I'm black, brown and white. I speak different language, but I must be respected, never rejected. I'm somebody. I am 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 somebody. Live from the Sky Sports News studio, I am somebody. 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 I am Oh, yeah.